All right, well, we're going to get started. Um, it is only an hour session and I'm super excited and uh, I'm looking forward to having a really keen session with you today. Um, welcome to the unconference. Um, it is very, very exciting to be here. My name is Stacey Jacobs. You're going to learn a lot more about me in today's session. So um, I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment. Today's session is titled Learning from Youth. Um, I'd like to acknowledge all of the people who have worked on the committee um, to be able to organise this event, who have freely offered their time, skills, abilities and passions to be able to create such an amazing event and to join so many people globally. Um, and these are the different people and different organisations who have supported today's event. First of all, um, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country for those who are not from Australia. An acknowledgement of country is something which is completed at the beginning of our meetings to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting on. Today, I am coming to you from Maitland, which is Wanarua people's land. And I'd like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples, their histories, culture and community. I acknowledge the lands of Australia were never ceded and respect that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are the traditional custodians of the land. I pay respect to Elders past, present and any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Island people who are present, but also our emerging leaders. So our young people are truly um, the driving force for what it is that I do and the importance of their knowledge and truth telling will become our next generation. So um, thank you to those people who have been able to share their journey so far and I look forward to supporting a new generation. So in terms of the unconference, if you haven't made it into a session as yet, if you can please remain muted unless you're speaking just to minimise some background noise. Um, in terms of the video, please limit turning the camera on and off as much as possible. Just kind of make a commitment and we'll go with it. <laughs> In terms of tech support, um, I have Jess here supporting me today and um, she is from the hosting team. And if you need any assistance, she's very happy to support and assist you on Zoom. Um, if you're having any difficulties, you can um, send her a private message in the chat. These sessions are all being recorded, um, so if you would prefer not to be captured, please ensure that your video is turned off. There will also be an opportunity at the end for us to take a little happy snap, and I'm a big fan of the photo with um, our ABCD sessions. So um, if you'd like to keep your camera off, that's fine, but otherwise if you want to come and strike a little bit of a youthful pose, that would be fantastic. So in order to get started, um, if you could please introduce yourself in the chat box and tell me your first name, any pronouns, um, your location, and uh, if applicable, the um, acknowledgement of country for the land you're currently on. So as I said, I'm on Wanarua land, um, and it might be different for other countries. Um, if you're from New Zealand, you might wish to acknowledge the land from which you're joining us from. That would be amazing if you could do that in the chat box. I'd also like to do an amazing plug. So um, the ABCD ebook is coming and, you know, this might be the first time which you've learned anything about ABCD, but there is a whole range of practitioners who are writing articles to come together 
and share an ebook. Uh, recordings from this year's unconference will go into the collection and you can submit stories. Um, if you need support with writing one or being able to gather um, ideas and information, there are lots of people who are happy to work with you from that committee. And it is something which we're trying to get a lot of different perspectives from all around the world. And there, there is a lot <laughs> um, because there is, you know, subtle differences in what we do. But the important thing is that we're working with our communities. So um, I know that there's sessions which are promoting information about the AB, ABCD ebook. So please make sure that you have a look at that. And we really look forward to um, promoting it and being able to share that with the entire community. So um, in terms of being on mute, you can test your microphone um, on the bottom and the speakers um, but during the session, please remain muted. Um, when you're ready to talk, unmute yourself and I can call on you. Um, and depending on your computer and your settings, you can also use your space bar to mute and unmute yourself. That's not necessarily working for people who are on the phone, of course. So please make sure that you do what is appropriate for your technology. As mentioned before, Jess is our um, tech support on this session. And I'm very grateful to have her here. Okay, so troubleshooting. Um, if you're having bandwidth problems, it could be because there's lots of other stuff running on your computer. Um, and if you also turn off the video for yourself, it can help with that. Um, and to prevent meeting controls from auto hiding, you can click on the Zoom client, go to settings, which is up the top, accessibility, and then always show meeting controls. Also, um, if you would like the live transcript at activated, please let me know and I will ensure that that happens. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat box. So to start off today, I thought that some reflection was required. I'm going to talk about young people, but in reality, we were all young once. And we were all passionate about something and it was important to us and it may still be important to you today, but it may not be. So one of the examples which I'm going to give you um, before I ask you to go into breakout rooms and do some reflection is as a young person, I was extremely passionate about public transport and improvements with public transport. It was because I didn't have a um, ability to drive myself around. It was very relevant because in my local area at the time, there wasn't great public transport. And I was a very, very strong advocate. I, I went to rallies and forums and it was really, really important to me. And it was, it's very interesting going through that reflection because today it does not hold um, exactly the same importance for me. And the point where that changed was, was when I got a license and I was able to then drive, it was no longer as relevant for me. Um, it's now relevant in a different way because when I'm working with young people and they're getting excited and they want to advocate about transport, I'm able to draw upon some of those skills. But today I want you to have a think about as a 15, 16 year old, what were you passionate about? What did you do about it? Uh, why was it important to you? And it doesn't have to be a big issue, but it could be something that absolutely was you know, something which you had arguments with people about or, or you had arguments with your parents about, you know, the importance and unfairness of it. So I'm going to ask you to go into some breakout rooms, just share some ideas. It's only going to be for a couple of minutes and um, have a think about does it hold the same importance for you today and why, why it may or may not. So I'm going to put you into some breakout rooms right now. Um, Okay, and away we go.
Hi, Cindy and manager. <laughs> We're just in some breakout rooms at the moment, um, talking about as a young person, what were you passionate about and why was it important to you and does it hold the same relevance to you today? Um, I will assign you to a breakout room and hopefully you'll be able to have some discussion. Just waiting on everybody to come back. Fantastic. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, is there anybody who would like to share something which they were extremely passionate about and um, still remain passionate about from being a teenager to today? I'll go, Stacey. Um, so hi, everyone. My name's Angela. I'm from Sydney, um, New South Wales, Australia. And um, my background is in counselling, um, social work, um, and currently working as a student support officer in a high school. Um, but I was saying to um, Ray um, and, you know, that part of and it was very similar to something that he spoke about, um, always wanting to help people. So when I was studying, I volunteered my time a lot in the um, like in the hospital kind of section of looking after sick kids in the Starlight Foundation and the Starlight Room at Westmead Children's, um, as well as spending time at Ronald McDonald House. And now, thankfully, I'm working in a role where I get to um, support young teenagers. And whilst they may not be sick, I still feel that it's you know all about well-being and looking after. Um, I guess you know different issues and different problems and challenges that they face so still really passionate about you know being a voice and an advocate for young people and helping where I can thank you so much Angela 
Is there anybody who had um, an example where they were like me, super passionate about something and it, it kind of um, lost its relevance along the way? I guess mine changed to some degree. Um, I yeah. was uh, uh, money focused uh, as a teenager and um, very much wanted to, to make millions. But um, somewhere along the lines, I realized that the money didn't matter if there was nobody to share it with. And uh, my passion was more about having money so I could share it with friends, which seemed to morph into helping others. And then I became a youth worker and, and sort of developed along that line. So not necessarily uh, diminished, but definitely changed the, my perspective on it. Yeah. Thank you, Luke. Really appreciate that. And for our young people, that is um, a common process. We often have things which we are extremely passionate about and they continue through um, to our adult lives. But there are some things which do change as we um like as we change and as we become more involved in different areas of life um, we start to realize what is truly important to us and in some cases money isn't so I'm just going to introduce you to somebody <laughs> this is young person Stacy so um, in the 90s I was a youth advocate for New South Wales and uh, I was very involved in creating skate parks. I still don't know how to skate. Um, I was also a, a youth advisor to the Premier and assisted in writing um, the youth policy in New South Wales, um, Australia. As a part of that, I was very um passionate, as I mentioned, about public transport. I was concerned about mental health, but there was, there was a lot of stigma around it at that time. Uh, I was very good at seeking young people to talk to about their concerns. And at the same time, I was worried about school and fitting in and really scared about being different. And for those who know me nowadays, that, that's well and truly gone by the by. The... Um, when I look at where I have finished and landed at this moment, I am working in a high school. Uh, I very much provide a safe space to allow for those who um, want to be able to fit in um, and encourage people to be unique and different. So it's very different. Um, concerns about mental health continue, of course, and I've become an advocate and very passionate about it and, of course, have continued with my consultation. At the moment, I work as a student support officer and that role is quite unique um, in New South Wales. It is one which will be in each of our high schools, um, but it started as a trial uh, almost 10 years ago. And what it allows is, is a youth work position within the high school full time, permanent, to be able to support the young people. Uh, that kind of sits apart from the counselling staff in terms of it's not a counselling position and it's not a teaching position either. So it's very much a, a different perspective compared to other forms of education. Okay, so I've got a question for you and I've got a mentee because I love mentees. In terms of you, what are the areas that you need support? All right. How is it that you um, like to get supported? And so this could be in your work, in your family, but in your work, I feel supported when, all right, is my posed question on our mentee. So um, if you'd like to, you can go to mentee.com. And if you enter the code or you can use the QR code and I'm looking at the information in terms of how do you feel supported? Because then we're going to have a chat about how that might work for young people. If anybody is having any troubles with that, please don't hesitate to unmute and tell me and um, I'm more than happy to assist.
tech is my friend. Excellent. Starting to get some words up. I'm going to stop sharing this one and I'll bring up the mentee so that everybody can see it as it happens. Um, I will have a copy of this for you uh, afterwards, of course. Oh, I'm loving some of the words and I can't wait to show you. All right. So in my work, I feel supported when I'm noticed, I'm heard, I'm learning from others, I'm praised, um, I'm trusted to do my job, uh, I'm involved in the change, I'm valued, inspired, it's flexible, you know. Um, everybody's so different. Um, there's opportunities to share my ideas. I, I love the fact that heard and respected and valued keeps getting entered as answers. Also, when I'm consulted, you know, having that voice and having that opportunity to be able to um, contribute. Um, when it may, when um, I'm connected with others. How important is that, especially at the moment? Um, I'm, I'm in a lockdown area and it is something which does really help us. Uh, when I get lots of feedback and when I'm learning from others and have someone to talk to about that, uh, when I'm challenged, how great is it to be challenged and to actually, you know, have that opportunity to actually participate and when I'm cared for. So amazing in terms of the ideas that we have about how we like to be supported. Now, for young people, and when we're talking about working with young people from learning from them, from consulting with them, all of these are exactly the same. Our young people love to be noticed. They love to be asked questions. And if they're extremely passionate about something, it is absolutely something which they will get involved with. Um, when they feel heard, when they actually feel like they're, not only have they been asked a question, but that their information has then been used to create or to support an idea. I'm going to go through some of the ways which that can um, assist us, well, can be assisted with our young people. Just head back into here. Thank you very much for sharing those. Okay, just want to introduce you to uh, my space at Cessnock High School. This is called The Hub and it's a safe space. Well, it's a safe physical space. And but that's not the, the only way which it's safe. It, the, the space itself has changed, the location has changed, but it is something which is very much student and youth driven in terms of what happens within this space. The space itself was provided. But it's the gifts that they've shared and the connections that they make across traditional stereotypes, across traditional, um, you know, concepts around year groups. So uh, working in a high school, traditionally there isn't a lot of cross-cultural, cross-mixing across year groups. Whereas in this space, within this hub, there is students from year seven to year 12 who mingle, who um, do informal mentoring, who support each other with ideas and concepts. They also start their own little mini clubs, um, for example, we have an anime club which has gone further than just 
the school. It's actually gone out into the community because the students have the skills to be able to now do that, to be able to run their own groups. And it is by empowering and providing a safe environment that the students have truly led. Of course, it requires supervision. <laughs> And of course, it requires young people to be given assistance where they need. So sometimes it's identifying how do you run a group? How do you um, support and facilitate? How do you, um, you know, deal with conflict? Which are all really important um, concepts for young people to consider. But it's a place also where consultation happens all of the time. Um, the reason and the importance for that is to be able to get ongoing feedback. Now, in terms of spaces, it's important to consider the following lenses, all right? So consistency, of course. Funding, of course. Connection, you know, having connection with the right people and also time. If any of these are in some way out, it can be really difficult to actually create connection. So, for example, if a funding is only for 12 months, creating a rich connection with young people doesn't happen in that kind of time frame. It's something which establishing rapport and establishing trust takes time. And so it also takes consistency and showing up every single day. So by using the assets within our space and by creating those connections between people over time, there's able to be a really, really rich dialogue. And young people feel empowered to actually take on their own roles to the point now where that safe space is, it's a student space. It is a place where they feel comfortable and they're quite happy to lead from, which, you know, schools can at times be places where there is a hierarchy, where there is power. And so to therefore have a space where young people feel that they have power is very, very important. Also allowing the opportunity for those gifts to flourish. As I mentioned, the opportunity of creating and, and providing groups is so important to our young people. They, they want to share, they want to give, and I reflect on Angela when she said she always wanted to help. There is a genuine desire by our young people to give and give freely of things which they know and, and things which they'd like to teach others and to inspire others to become involved. So being able to provide a space that allows that, that allows the opportunity um, and that is consistent. The difficulty always is that funding model and, you know, having pilot projects means that creating those spaces can be really difficult, but how do you continue to um, work with people so that you make sure that those four elements can work in harmony together where, as opposed to one of them being off kilter? When we think about um, our young people and community, the young person, of course, is, you know, the most important person. They do have supports that sit outside that and we have community that, you know, is a part of, it takes a community to raise a child. We, we talk about that quite frequently. And so all components must be involved when we're talking about learning from our young people. It isn't just asking the young person at times. Sometimes it's asking the support networks and asking the community about what gifts can they give, how can they support. 
So if young people are passionate about an opportunity, they will take the chance to participate in whatever format it's provided. I have seen um, surveys which have been 50 questions long and have had, you know, multiple qualitative answers being required. And you can see one survey where they don't um, engage and they don't see the importance and they don't um, want to participate. But if they understand and they're passionate about it. It doesn't matter what format it is provided in. However, to increase that participation and to gain support from your youth voice, then they really do need time to prepare and time to understand. So being able to um, set up, for example, a youth consultation or a youth forum, and providing the questions in advance allows for greater participation. It does mean that there has to be a whole range of extra communication, but it's amazing the depth that you can receive if you are actually providing um, time. Verbal and written. Um, I'm going to give some examples of how um, having both is actually vitally important. And there's a bit of a, um, an idea that young people are great on technology and that's not actually accurate for all young people. Sometimes they're really good at just being able to take photos or just being able to use Facebook. Um, it doesn't necessarily translate into other apps and other ways of working. So considering whether or not technology is actually going to be accessible for the group. The importance of connection and being able to utilise young people with that connection, having youth ambassadors, youth advocates as a part of a process. And the most important ingredient is food. If there's food involved, uh, guaranteed that there will be young people who want to participate. And sometimes it doesn't even matter what that food is. Okay. All right. I've got a jam board. For those of you who um, have never used a jam board, I love using jam boards with my young people. They are absolutely amazing to be able to get information, um, to create group rules, um, everything else. So I'm just going to put into the chat the jam board link um, and stop sharing. Oh. Yep, it's in the chat. <laughs> and so a jam board is basically like a really big, fancy um, whiteboard that we can put sticky notes on. All right. Absolutely amazing. So super cool. And what I would like you to think about is how can you incorporate youth voice into your practice? Now, this can be in a way which is, um, I've already listed, it can be something else. And the way which we use a Jamboard, just for your information, if you have never used it, is over here on the side, there is a sticky note button. All right, you click on that and up comes, you can colour them if you like, I'm a bit like that. Um, but you can type in it. So I'm going to write my favourite one, which is food, of course. And then you click save and you can, I'm going to click cancel on this one, but you can see how I've then put the sticky note on the page. Really effective as a different way, uh, especially during um, online learning or um, if you're having groups which are going across large geographical areas, uh, you can participate and do what you would normally do on a larger scale. So I'm just going to move these as you will type them. Um, and what is really great about these jam boards is that you can also, um, on these three dots, you can download them as a PDF um, and you can put them, like you can then print it, you can um, have it as a record of conversations that you've had. So I really do like it in terms of engaging with young people and a way for them to put up information that is also um, 
well, that they don't have to verbalise because, as I said, there is multiple ways for us to be able to consult and one of them is um, verbally by asking at forums and asking for the person who um, feels that they have the public speaking skills and the leadership to be able to stand. However, this is an opportunity for our um, young people who may have really great ideas to still participate still participate. I really like what we're coming up with. So um, leadership teams other than SRC, um, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a student representative council um, and it's with um, high schools. Um, involving them in decision making, of course. Music, I love music. <laughs> Storytelling, um, I'm a great, great storyteller. <laughs> Um, and I love when I hear their stories that they're framed and they talk about what their journey's been like and it's really interesting to get that perspective. Um, survey gamification, beautiful, love it. Hands-on engagement. Um, some of the, the best things that I've ever run have been um, involving where we've involved our other senses. So we've got touch and, and taste and hearing and, you know, smell that are involved because they're really um, happy to be there. And, you know, if you've got food and you've got a barbecue going at the same time, you've got that smell that's happening and you've got that um, idea that we're going to share a meal together and a connection, it, it really does wonderful things. Uh, how do they want to help is so vitally important. Asking young people how they want to help, because as I mentioned, if they're passionate about something, the question will not be um, like, is this too hard? It'll be how many times can I participate if they're passionate? But if they are not passionate about it, it's really difficult. Um, they, they may not see the purpose. They may not see the, the reasons why. All right, fantastic. I'm just going to have to move along and I'm so sorry. Um, hour goes really fast. <laughs> All of this information will be available afterwards. So um, if you continue to participate, that's okay. I'm going to um, continue to... Um, filter that out. So I'm just going to talk about a couple of um, success stories that have happened from doing things a little bit different and learning from young people in terms of how to gain youth voice. So for example, the first example which I have is our youth forum of 2014. And there was five different ways of participating. The first one was that there was um, your traditional plenary session where, you know, somebody came and they, they lecture style and then a microphone was passed around. And um, I'd taken some young people to a youth forum and some of them didn't feel incredibly comfortable with that being the only way of participating. And so the design which we made was that, Yes, the first session was a plenary. But after that, we actually split everybody up into very small groups of six people and they had uh, individual facilitators on a topic around the room. What that meant was they got about 10 minutes with that facilitator and you might have started on a topic such as the environment and then moved to the next topic, which um, we're all guided by young people to be created. Um, there was transport, mental health, um, physical health, employment, uh, education. So a huge range of topics. So while you were also sitting with that um, facilitator, who was a young person, you were also able to have a booklet where you could write down your ideas. So that was the third way of being able to participate. And it meant that every time that you went to a session, you could write something down, you could put it into a box, or you could then um, talk about it further. 
We then had a sharing wall, which we had some different members of council and different members of the community who were actually there to read about the ideas of what young people felt were important. And they had the opportunity to write those on post-it notes or notes of their choice. They could draw them and they could put them on the wall. Then there was another option, which was that they could um, send in a question via a survey monkey using iPads that we had at the time. So rather than having to ask a question, which can be a scary thing to do in front of a group of people when you're not too sure, they were able to still ask the question um, just in a different way. So the five ways of participation meant that there was a whole range of data that came out of that event. And Going into it, I, I'm a youth worker. I had um, some preconceptions about what the biggest presenting idea was going to be. And to be honest, in an area which it, um, struggles with um, opportunities for young people, uh, transport and also um, employment, I, I really thought that those were probably going to be one of my top three. Uh, and I was pleasantly surprised that I was wrong. Um, what happened and occurred was because of the rich information that we were able to get across a whole range of students, which were not just student leaders, they were uh, over 250 people from three different high schools, we were able to get a clear understanding that the main primary focus for these young people was their friends and mental health. And mental health was so important to them that when asked to vote for the most important issue of the day, over 80% picked mental health as their issue of choice. What that then meant is that report was then able to be used to advocate with local council, the local youth council and the state government to eventually see a change where there was mental health services in the local area. Some of those young people continued to work on that project because they saw that people were prepared to listen, that, they, that their opinions were relevant, that they mattered, and they saw that there was an attempt to change. What that meant for them was, was that when it happened, they were able to feel a sense of accomplishment. And although it continues to, um, you know, present as an issue, it's not the same in terms of the necessity and the um, drive that it used to be. Those young people who participated were also then able to see how important their voice was and how important sharing their opinion was because we were able to continue that dialogue with young people. My other example and success story is um, the Cessnock High School Interact. For those of you who don't know what an Interact Club, it is a um, rotary based club and it's basically I term it a baby rotary and it is something which in high school they um, become involved with service. The opportunity of being able to give back and have a purpose meant that within 18 months I had a club which went from five members to 72 and they won an international award for um, a platinum international award for their service and their choice of projects. They wanted to help their local community. They had a deep desire to do so. And they did the research. They did all of the hard work themselves. But it was just the opportunity to be able to participate. And for our young people, that's often what they are craving is the opportunity. In terms of ourselves as practitioners, it's about thinking 
young people have amazing assets. They have amazing skills. And how can we actually provide an opportunity for youth voice, youth action, and to be able to empower them with skills that when they do go out into adult world, they will continue So special thanks today to Cessnock High School, who um, are, of course, my employers and are amazing. Uh, they have given me the best job and the best life purpose. I've, I, I can't, I would never, ever, ever want to leave. Um, I do have my Facebook page there. Uh, I like likes. I constantly say that. If you'd like to follow me, that's great. Uh, I also have my email address there, but it'll also be into the harvest and all notes will be uploaded on Kiko for download post presentation. So we'll have some screenshots and things like that. Um, but today I want to talk about a checkout. All right. For those of you who haven't um, participated in some of the ABCD um, stuff. Uh, a checkout is something which we do at the end of a session and it kind of tries to draw everything back together um, and make it relevant for you moving forward. All right, so I'm just going to, sorry, I've got to bring up my, oh, I love how many things are on the um, jam board, <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> I'm just going to bring up my, um, oh, if anybody has any questions, can you please put them in the chat box? Okay, so a um, the way which a checkout works is, is it's a question which is posed to you to have a think about as to how are you going to take some of the information which we've talked about today and move forward? So, what I would like to pose to you, oh, the five ways of participation? Yes, sure, Monica. So we had the plenary where people could talk verbally um, and um, use a microphone. We then had the smaller sessions where we're talking six to eight young people. We then also had our um, where you could write in a booklet and pass that information on. We had a wall where they could use sticky notes. And then we had a survey monkey where they could also um, put their questions in. Um, fantastic way of ensuring that you are addressing all areas of access. Um, the other component is, is that we shared the information that we were going to be talking about before the youth forum. And what that meant was, was that they were able to have a think about it and know what we were going to talk about. It wasn't a surprise. And that's something which uh, I think that we all like to be able to know information. We all like to be able to have a think about it before we're put on the spot and asked a question. So young people are no different and that's certainly the case with their support needs. Um, and what I'd like you to think about is what did young Luke need? What did young Angela need to be able to participate and be able to um, have an opinion and to be able to have growth and how can you incorporate that into your practice because some people they forget what it was like to be a young person they forget about the, the how important it was to you know rally against um, an idea um, to you know become super passionate so my checkout for you today is I want you to think about what did young you need and why was that critically important at that time? Because if you can understand that, then we can start to understand what young people might need when we're working with them and when we're asking them questions. Now, before we finish, 
I have to do a photo and I'd really love some people on camera. Um, as I mentioned, I'm one of the crazy people in the meetings who loves to do like lots of, you know, peace signs. And, you know, if you've seen any of the stuff on the Jada Institute, it's all me um, being a bit crazy. So if you um, would like to put your camera on for my picture, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, and then um, I can, I'm just going to, I've got to do a screenshot thing, you know, whole, whole difficulty of things. Um, and then I will come in and, okay, so I'm going to go five, <laughs> four, <laughs> three, two, and anybody who wants to make a silly one. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can unmute. I am aware that it's about five to the hour and that there are so many cool sessions um, that are happening here at the ABCD um, conference. Um, please go and enjoy. There is there are some super cool people here from across the world and uh, I really would love for you to meet some of them. They're amazing. Um, yeah. Any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to turn off my recording and then I'll take anything else. I'm just getting thank yous. Thank you to Jess. Jess, you're amazing. This might be um, perpetuating a narrative that's completely false, but was it hard to sustain interest um, in the Interact group over time? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I think that it is about finding a passion and purpose that's relevant to the young people um, and allowing them to drive that. If young people are passionate and interested, they have no limits in terms of what they provide and how they um, engage. If it's something which is designed or given to them, it, it's not something which they will necessarily have the same love or care for. Um, and to that end, we did have guest speakers who would come and talk about their ideas and concepts. And um, sometimes they just went, no, we, we actually don't really um, care about that. You know, one of the, the most um, inspiring things which I saw, they did kindness awards because they felt it was really important for, to be kind to others and recognise people who were kind. And they invited everybody for dinner and um, they made dinner for staff and students and Rotary and members of the community and gave out kindness awards. They, But that was what they wanted to do and with support, I'm a bit of a sook, so I cried a lot <laughs> because they were, they were using their voice and their skills, their gifts. Any other questions? All right, beautiful. Much love to you all. Enjoy the young conference. It's also Wellbeing Wednesday, so um, have a great day. And um, I look forward to seeing you in some other sessions um, as your tech host. <laughs>